when you when you discovered Kate Bush, she was like sixteen or something. Fifteen, I think. Yeah. Is it true that they they just held her material back until they thought she was old enough? For, uh, I don't. What's, what's I, the truth I, of that story? I think that's the uh, I think that's the record company blurb. You know, uh, they when we when we started her off, I put her together with an an engineer and a producer and an arranger and a top studio, and, and I chose the songs out of. She had about 40 or 50 songs, and I picked three. And um, I had this friend of mine who was a range of producer, and I gave him the songs and said, listen, get this all fixed up. Take her in the studio and do these songs as masters, not as demos. And I said, uh, I'd already got demos, and I knew that from the way she sounded when she was plonking away on the piano, it took, you know better than an average A&R man's ear to spot the talent in it. So, How did you actually interact with her first? Where did you first run into her? Um, she was the sister of a friend of mine's friend. And so it's who you know. And this, yeah, and uh, my friend came to me and said, listen, my friend has a little sister who's really groovy, you know. Um, have a listen. So I said, all right, I'll have a listen. But... Um, you know, I was kind of busy at the time doing other things. And I didn't really have the time to get deeply involved with it. So I just spent some time listening to the tapes, and doing some demo tapes with her and stuff, and picked out songs, sent her into a studio, and made three masters, which I then took to EMI and said, do you want this? And they listened to it and said, yes, we'll have it, please. And, uh, and they put two of, the, two of the tracks, which were those demos, on the first album, but they were recorded like two or three years before the other thing and what they were actually doing was that they were putting her with various different producers they didn't want to use the guy that I had originally used for some reason and I think the delay was more about thinking she hadn't got enough good songs and the producers just not making getting the right thing out of her because they were putting her with the wrong people and eventually they a guy, a guy from EMI came back to me and said um Come on, Dave. It's all right. We won't say anything, but admit it. You sold us a dud here, you know. You know, you you gave us, you know, you you sort of conned us by making the, the only song she'd ever written that was any good um, sound so good that we took it off you. Just I mean, we don't care, you know. It's okay. It's normal business, but admit it. I said, give me a fucking break, you know. This girl's really talented, and they said, well, we just can't get anything right. We can't get it right. We've tried it with God knows who, and there's this person and that producer. And we haven't got anything out of it. I said, well, why don't you go back to the guy that I put her with originally? They said, well, well, you don't like him very much. And, and I, I said, listen, he's good. He knows what he's doing on this stuff. Give it a try. And that's when it started. That's when it, the, they made the album. And it, just, it was plain sailing, but they wasted two years pissing around with, with the wrong producers for her and stuff. And, and claimed it was waiting for her to mature and all that sort of bullshit. But <laughs> What, what is it about uh, record executives that make them that way, I wonder? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, you know, record exe company executives are often more concerned with business, and, and they have to be. I mean, that's their job, is they have to make the, you know, you know, the profit and loss accounts match up at the end of the year, you know, and uh, it's a very unforgiving business, so that is geared towards that being the case, and a lot of the people in the A&R side of it are people who would have preferred to be singing or playing the guitar themselves and weren't quite good enough to do that. So they, you know, or being a record producer. I mean, a, lot, a lot of people are, tend to be a little frustrated in, the, in, the, in those areas of record companies. Excuse me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with most cases. <clears throat> I would, I would bet that right after that, after word came out about your discovering Kate Bush, that you got like a thousand demos yeah. that week. Yeah, lots of girl, young girl singers demos I used to get from that. And, and uh, you wouldn't yeah, every time you get involved with anything like that, you get hundreds of, of second-rate copies of the same thing coming through to you. That's what I was, I've been getting in the last year, is lots of sort of dodgy Dream Academy copies and stuff. And, what offers to produce, or uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, them try sending things to me personally if they can find me, or record companies asking me to produce people, yeah.